what's up, what's up, um, the train's been delayed, blah, blah, blah. They told us to go home, so I'm going to go home. He goes, what do you mean, like, you guys? Mm. I'm going home. He goes, no, 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 turn around. He said, go to Watford. When you get to the ground, call me. Kenny Jacket comes driving down the road. Said, I got my Watford tracksuit on. So he goes, what are we, we doing, son? Told him what happened. He goes, well, my under 15s are playing at Stanmore. Come and play for us. Within two weeks of the injury, I couldn't do this. This one, my left arm comes to my hair, and it couldn't, it won't, I couldn't bend it anymore, right? I couldn't clench a fist. Grubby Graham Taylor, he was on a different level. Kenny, I would more say, my best coach. That is a lesson in that. Even though son looks beautiful on the outside read the label and when you open up the packaging check to make sure inside is good as well one welcome to another episode of the coach jerry lammy podcast um First and foremost, I want to say a big thank you to everyone that's been supporting the channel. Um, we've got some amazing episodes previously, and today I guarantee we've got another banger for you guys. Um, I'm joined by what for legend, and I don't want to just say what for legend. I want to say a legend in general in football, especially if you come from certain backgrounds, and um, you'll know this guy. You'll know this guy. So before um, I ramble on too much, I want to introduce Gifton Noel Williams. Gifton, welcome, bro. Thanks for coming on the pod. Hey, that was a big introduction, man. I got, <laughs> I, got, I got big shoes to fill, man. Thank you, bro. It's, it's nice to be here to chat to you about football and life, man. I'm excited about it. No, hundred percent, man. Do you know? Do you know what it is? Like we said off air, um, when I when I came across the the, the interview that you, that you did with Roots, obviously I've 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 seen you play ball when I was younger and things like that. So, like when I when I saw the interview. You know, you, like you watch footballers back in the days, but you don't really know them too much because there wasn't much media hype back in the days, mm -hmm. where, you know, the era that you grew up in. So we've been blessed to kind of have, you know, the insights of, you know, ex-pros or current pros and things like that. So when I sat down and, and watched that one, and to be fair, you know, I do watch a lot of podcasts and things like that. So I try and get what I can from the, from the, from the um, episode. And, you know, sometimes it's like, I didn't really get much out of it, but there's a lot that I do. So when I sat down and watched your one, I said, no, nah, we need we need people like this in the football industry to to help this, these youngsters come through, man, and, 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 you know, go through the similar experience that you might have gone through that you can help, do you know what I mean? Especially in a coaching scene, whether it's mentoring, which I'm sure you, you, you're doing that as well. But um, yeah, man, I was like, nah, we, we need to get him on the pod and, 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 do you know what I mean? Wrap it up and, and get something out to, to these youths out here, man. So, again, pleasure, bro, for, for, for coming on, man. I love it. Never a problem, man. Anyway, I can try and help. You know, it's, as you said, what you're saying there is that that's the reason why I do these things. Because yeah, yeah. I feel that for my story, I know my story. And mm -hmm. people that know me very well, they know my story. But what I've come to realise that there's so many people that are either going through something that I went through or they're about to go through something that I've gone through. Mm -hmm. Or... Or maybe they've gone through it and they're feeling bad about it. Now they just want to hear a little version to understand that it's okay because enough people go through these kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. it's just wherever I can um, send the message out, you know what I mean? I'm just trying to help someone out and, and have a good conversation. I like good football conversation. You know what come I mean? on, come on. <laughs> now, do you know what? Like, I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it a bit left a little bit here where um, I mm -hmm. see you post up something the other day where you were talking about um, it's all right to cry for men to cry and things like that. Yeah. Where yeah. hearing it from an alpha male like yourself, like, do you know what I mean? where he's saying to you, so right to cry, where, you know, there's times where it's only recent. I'm, I'll put my hand up. I'm not going to lie. It's only of recent that I've, those emotions have come out of me. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, why, why, yeah. why is there times where I'm just feeling teary or whatever? And it's like, mm. my missus is saying, it's cool. Like, that's your emotions. Mm. You've got to lay it out. But we haven't been, we haven't been brought up like that <clears throat> in the environment where if you show those emotions, that's, that's that's an advantage advantage for someone to come and do you know what I mean take over and you know poke their yeah. bear a little bit and you know what I mean so to hear that was breath of fresh air and and like I said from an alpha male like yourself where you know people look up to you and you said that you know what it's all right to to um to cry and whatnot like what what made you post that up well, listen, if I'm being honest, as I said on the, on the meet video, I'll chat to my bridge. I ain't going to expose no one. Yeah, no, no. Talk about anyone's business at over. But I know that he's, he's cool with me talking about the little situation on a general basis. So um, that's why I kind of done the video. What it was is I said to my friend, and he's telling me about, you know, just being stressed out, you know, the whole situation right now with COVID and, you know, with his finances, life, mm -hmm. female, wife, the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, those, yeah, I mean, the I'm pressures. Just laughing, I mean, I just, yeah, I mean, I'm just talking on a level like we just talk, you know, we're big men, so we can just talk and and it's not about 
complaining, it's about talking and reasoning between ourselves. And then, like, he was about to cry. Mm -hmm. And he said, but I'm going to go, you know, bro. I said, what are you going for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, talk in I said, talk, I said, talk. He said, nah, man, I, said, I don't really want to cry in front of you, G. I said, bro, just cry in it. I said, it's a big man. I said, Wait, look at you. I know you. It's a big man for you. I've known you for all these years. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think of you differently now. Can you, you cry in front of me? Mm -hmm. I said, come on, man. I said, come on, man. You should know better than that. I said, look how many times I've cried in front of you when I was stressed out over the years. But way back then when I'm I'm angry, I'm frustrated mm -hmm. with this football, life, kids, the X, Y, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and I've come to you and then me and you, and you tell me, gifts don't wear, man. I mean, you're going for a little drink or, or going for a drive or something. I said, so yeah. it's a big, now we're bigger. It's not anger no more. It's not through frustration. We, we know we're, we're in control of our emotions. Mm -hmm. So now if you control your emotion, you feel sad or you feel down, you can reach out to someone and cry. Because what I think, what people think is, because I'm an alpha male, as you said before, is, I grew up in, a, in an environment similar to yourself, where crying, asking for help, um, telling someone you're scared, mm -hmm. it was, it's all weakness. You can't it's all do weakness. that. Like, mm. If you go and tell someone you're scared, right, in the end, people will look at you different. They won't, that's it, you're finished from your target mm -hmm. from, that, from that day onwards. Now, what I've realized is, no, nah, you know what? Enough times I've been scared, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> enough course, times I've been scared. Mm -hmm. Bro, it's enough times I've been scared, enough times I looked at it in my life and thought, wow, where am I going? And it's a frightening experience. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it doesn't mean that I'm a scared person. It mm -hmm. just means that I was scared for a moment and it hit me hard. And maybe when I spoke to someone, I said, boy, I've got these big challenges in front of you. And you, when you get it out and you can talk to someone else about certain little things, it's like a burden just leaves your shoulders, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like my, mm -hmm. my biggest thing for me was my cousin, Michael. And he's passed away. He died of brain, brain cancer. Oh, wow. But, tell you, bro, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, Michael, for me, was my rock. You understand? So that was my person who I could cry to on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people don't know these kind of things, but I cried to Michael about nothing. <laughs> the word, the word. <laughs> Seriously, but that was the one person I knew. My dad died when I was 13, right? So wow. Michael kind of took over as my dad mm -hmm. from 13 onwards. So, so I, I could cry in front of him. I could cuss in front of him. I could... I could tell him all my business. You, you, you understand? Anything yeah, yeah. I've been through in my yeah. life, he was always there. So that was my constant. And then when Michael passed away, I didn't have no one to cry to. Mm -hmm. And for a little bit of time, it hit me hard. And I was in America when he passed away as well. Okay. So I was in America, got no one really to cry to. You know, you, you, you can talk to the wife, you can talk to other people, but it's not, it's it's not, not the same. same. Mm -hmm. No, not the same. So Michael was that person. And it took me a few years, I must admit, to kind of learn how to do with these things myself mm. and then how, how to be able to portion out to some people, to let people in. Because Michael was the only person I let in, really, yeah, truly. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? He's the only person I really, truly let in, let in, let in. Mm. And I've had to learn over the years that, all right, I'm not letting everyone in, but yeah. if I feel weak, maybe I need someone to bring me up sometimes because in, for me, in my life, I'm always helping other people. Mm -hmm. So I'm a, I am the support system for many, many people. Do you understand? Many people come to me for mentoring, for advice, for help, whatever kind of, whatever it is. So I feel that, and I don't want to say this in a funny way, so it's, yeah, it's like I'm, I think I'm some great kind of person, but I feel like I've got, at times, the weight of everyone on me. Do you understand what I mean? Because yeah, yeah, everyone, yeah. everyone wants advice from me, my kids, my, you know, I've got seven yeah, yeah. kids, so mm -hmm. that, that by itself is, is enough. You yeah, yeah. Okay? strong, so, strong. Right, right. Yeah, you know yeah. Saying, yeah. So I've got all of that on me, and I can mm -hmm. deal with it. But sometimes, and, and, and I don't care what anyone says, sometimes the weight just gets too much. Mm. And like I'm down on my knees and it's like, I, I need to let out. I need to, I need mm -hmm. to, I need to, I need to, I need some strength from someone. I need to draw yeah, from yeah, some strength yeah. from someone else. Mm. And sometimes by me talking to someone who I know is strong, strong mm -hmm. enough to handle this kind of burden, another alpha person, I can talk to them. They give me some of their strength for a minute mm. and I'm back to my, I'm, I'm good again. Mm, that, powerful. That kind of, you know what I'm trying to say? Now, 100%. Another bro. big for me. Another thing for me, you know, bro, and I ain't going to talk about religion because I, that's a whole different thing, mm -hmm. but me meditating. Mm. And I know people look at meditating like you have to go and sit there, mm, <laughs> yeah. like, I put a candle. No, yeah, yeah. You don't have to do that. You understand? For me, meditating, this is my personal um, interpretation. Now, someone might look at the book and say, give, you know, say that. Mm. In the book, don't say that. But my personal, <laughs> what yeah. meditating does for me, it gives me time away from everything. Mm -hmm. No music. No mm. television, no one screaming, no one shouting, and I can just get and just go and clear my thoughts. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I've, I don't know if you've ever been through time before when your head feels messy. 100%, feels bro. Like 100 things are flying around in mm-hmm. your head. And I find with me, I can just take time out and meditate and find mm-hmm. just meditate and just, it ain't even a prayer thing, like I'm praying to anyone. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. My own version. I'm not even going to tell you anyone what I do because it's mm-hmm. my own version. Mm-hmm. But I just let my thoughts go away. Mm-hmm. And I tell you what, man, sometimes it's just like a filing cabinet, man. It just, all the things just go file, file away. So I, mm-hmm. I really see that for my own self, I like to meditate. So people out there, if you're really stressed out, try and find some time. I'm not saying you go go and get candles and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'll be honest, bro. I'm yeah, not, yeah, no, 100%. Big, big thing, but it's just taking time out. Mm-hmm. Taking, you can do it in your car. Sometimes mm-hmm. in my car, you know, and mm-hmm. I park outside the, outside the house. And it's like, like five, ten minutes, I just sit down there. Yeah, yeah. Just, take like, that time take out. My, Right, take a little time out, you understand? Sometimes no, it's needed. Too, too much in the rat, rat, in the rat race sometimes. Hundred percent, man, definitely. Yeah. And like, do you know I'm what? It's... On one. No, 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 bro. It's good though. This, this is the, that's why I said I'm taking it left because it's like you know, it, before anything, before this footballer, before this this image of a footballer, there's that person which people don't get to see that you know the things that happen behind the scene that that get you to that position and and this is another thing that I want to you know explore a little bit more and show the youth out there it's not about just seeing a person who they are there's things that they're doing to get to that level behind the scenes that you won't that you won't be able to see it's not just you yeah. turn up and you're you're playing ball it's it's these little extra things these extra one percent here one percent there that'll add up to the hundred do you know what I mean so it's like it's powerful man and and, and what you said in terms of um, who do you go to for, like for support and things like that? It's like mm-hmm. who's I think I think it was Jay Z who said a bar or something like that. Who who where does the goal get a goal to get his stuff basically? Like, do you know what I mean? Because you lot all taking from me, but where am I getting my source of energy? Do you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, yeah. I, and I, do you know what I was feeling that the other day? Honestly, as well, like if we're, if we're talking about it, um, I was speaking to my missus because same thing. I get people that message me, whether it be coaches, whether it be youths that I used to coach in, in Hackney or wherever, like, and always asking for advice and whatnot. Another day, and I, I was just like, I'm tired, man. Like, where, where, where am I get? Like, who am I going for that advice? Like, there's obviously there's people there, but like you said, I can't go into too deep with them. Like, do you know what I mean? You know your boundaries, and that was another thing, like, which I agree with you, where you can speak to people, but can't speak to everyone because not everyone's going to give you that answer that you're looking for so you, you're kind of clutching on, on on you know like loose straws and whatnot so it's like yeah. It, it's yeah man so it's definitely you got to find that right person and and yeah. and and you know what i mean vent when you can so that's powerful yeah. but one thing that i wanted to touch on as well was obviously your upbringing like yeah. for me that's a that's a that's a huge important part in terms of your upbringing and, and into your adulthood. Um, what talk to us about? Obviously, you grew up in it was in Islington, right? Yeah, man, I'm an Islington boy, man. Islington boy, yeah. So that's yeah. what I know about Islington yeah. as well. So I grew up around <laughs> Islington and I went to college mm-hmm. then. So, but um, okay, right, yeah. so how? Because obviously, when I was around, it was very diverse. When you was when you yeah. was growing up, what was it like? Was it as diverse as it is now? And what was your experience growing up in in, in Islington? I think we was we were probably the first generation of making it diverse. Okay, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So you had so like my mum come over from Jamaica. You had other families there that come up from Jamaica, Africa, mm-hmm. um, um, Bangladesh, Pakistan. You know other people. So it was the beginning of it starting to get um, multi multicultural. Yeah. But it wasn't more culture when I was growing up. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. If you know, if you know the area where I'm from, I'll talk. I'll say places. If you understand where it is, you understand. If you don't, then mm-hmm. you, you get an understand of where I'm coming from. So, I lived in. I lived off. I lived in Treaty Street. Okay. And that's of Col- Copenhagen Street, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, Copenhagen Street <clears throat> goes down, and then Col- Caledonia Road comes across, and you go up a hill towards Angel. Mm-hmm. So, Angel was where Sainsbury's was. Mm-hmm. Still right. is there, though. So, still is there. Angel still okay. is there, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Now imagine I've got to go down and up the hill, past um, Barnard Park. Okay. To, to get to to get to Angel, to get to Angel to Sainsbury's, right? Now Barnard Park was the most racist place where you could imagine. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? So that meant every time I'm going to Sainsbury's, it's a race, isn't it? It's a race, right? Mm-hmm. So you can imagine. On the way there, it's not so bad because I ain't got no shopping. Mm. It's only when you got a loaf of bread, milk, all of that. Ah, oh, bro. <laughs> you can imagine on the way home, you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's funny because these things kind of made me who I am because I can learn different ways how mm. to get in and out of the ends. Mm. 
Mm. And then what happened is, and that's why I believe in football, you know, football is a major thing. And football, I think, football can heal, he can heal, it can heal wounds, it can, it can, it can heal racism, it can do a lot. Because back then, because I was a little, little bad boy, little footballer, I had a friend who was mixed race. Okay. Now, because he was light skinned, he was allowed to go up there. Wow. Because his mum, yeah, because his mum was white and his dad okay. was black. His dad wasn't around, was around so much. His mum was around, around, around up there. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like the mums accepted her. So the boys accepted him. If that okay. kind of makes sense. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. He was light. He was really light, right? So we used to play football together at school. So he goes, nah, you got to come up and play for us up here. I said, nah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you got to play for your man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the kids that have get, he goes, nah. Because back in the days, it don't happen no more. Back in the days, you used to play estate against estate. Or area against area, you, you know what I mean? And you yeah, yeah, your, yeah. The man them come down from an cage, day, yeah, yeah. And you got to knock on all the ballers. All mm-hmm. the ball, every, everyone's knocking on the ballers. Mm-hmm. All the ballers together. You brought back, back some memories, you know. Right, you, you, brought, you, saying, yeah, you brought it back. Right? All right, cool. Right, you right? So that's how we used to do it back in the yeah, day. Yeah. So like, these guys now they had a big game coming up against. Mm. I think some boy, I think Hackney or some boys were coming down. So he goes, "No, come on, play." I said, "No, I'm not going to play up there with you guys. You're mad. Them guys will kill me, right?" Mm-hmm. I'm not going to play. So come. He said, no, come, trust me, come. So I quit my bridge and said, I'm going to go with him. So I went with him. At first, they didn't really want me to play. He said, no, play Gifton. This guy's good, he's good. I must have banging about 20 goals for them. You know, in, you know, back in the days, the score was like yeah, yeah, 30-something. Yeah. 30 something. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Right. It got to a point in the game, after I touched the ball about five, six times, all them members said, give the ball to Gifton, give the ball to Gifton. <laughs> You right. gotta go past was, six man and all of that. That like, yeah, yeah. Bang, I was banging. I was just banging yeah, yeah, yeah. on it. You know what I'm saying, right? Because it's football for me. It wasn't about mm-hmm. anything. else. I'm kicking balls, so that's there's that's no fouls, no fouls. You're getting taken out. You get, yeah, yeah. get on with it, mate. You yeah, get, yeah. You get, you you get, get on with it, right? right. And we just doing our thing. We won the game, and then from that day, them white boys love me. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they love me. Like gift, gift. Yeah, yeah. I could walk up. I, I used to okay. walk now. Walk up to say with. Them boys see me, what's up, Gift? I say, yeah, you're all right, man. And I walk by them. Mm-hmm. They see me on the way back, they walk by. Two twos, some of them become half friends. Okay. You know you're young, so they can't, so now when I see them now, they're more talking to me. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. see I mean? Before they'll just see, they what's up, Gift? Now they're trying to talk to me now. Next thing you know, some more black boys are moving into mm-hmm. the area now. And them black boys are cool with these boys. And then before you know it, the whole area was kind of just getting on. Yeah, yeah. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, now, yeah, Now this yeah. is what I'm saying, like, but this happened through football. Mm-hmm. Now I'm not saying that the parents were getting on because the adults were still racist. The dads okay. were, and the dads and the moms were still racist to a certain degree. Do you understand, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But the kids, we weren't racist. The kids weren't racist no more because yeah. they ain't all this stuff at home about black people. This, but their mates are black, and oh, these black mm-hmm. guys are cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the yeah, kids yeah. are getting confused and like, you, you, you saw coming from. Now mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you a story from my side of things, on the flip side <laughs> about life. And my mom, my mom, I'm sure she won't mind me saying. <laughs> <laughs> so. Growing up, and we're talking about racism and, and, and where I was growing up, so yeah, in, yeah. in the time. So in the time, my mum coming over from, from Jamaica, there was a lot of people that treated her kind of bad and stuff, you know? So she mm-hmm. didn't really like a lot of white people. Mm-hmm. So we always got told, don't bring white people to our house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't have no white friends because you can't trust them. And that's, because that was her growth, that's what she That's her experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That experience of life, mm-hmm. right? So that was what it was. So me growing up as kids, yeah, again, remember, I'm the kid now. Mm-hmm. I don't know about no racism. Yeah, so yeah. Everyone in my anyone in my in my class, if you're my friend, you're my friend, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, when you're young, you don't have, look at them things, innit? I'm saying so I have this white friend, right, called Jamie now, Jamie Kinsella, my bridging. So every day now, I'll, not every day, but sometimes I'll sneak him back home. And then we'll be in my, my, my house doing it, but I know what time my mom comes back in it. Mm. Every day it's like my mom's like clockwork. Every time, every day, she leaves the same time, come back at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just sneak Jamie out in time. Jamie go on his business. My mum come home. Hi, right, yeah, yeah, I've done what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm doing my own work. Everything's nice, right? So now, one day now, me and Jamie in the house. No, Jamie's in the toilet. I ain't going to go into that deep with Jamie yeah, in the yeah. toilet. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the next, that's the next thing that well, I thought my mum was going to kill me about. It really happened. So he was in the toilet. My mum come in the house early from work. I'm sweating now. <laughs> now Jamie, come, Jamie come out of the toilet. Mum see, mom see, what's this? Oh, go on. What's going on? Uh, yeah, uh, my, my friend from school. So I said to him, mum, look around a little bit. Like, I'm thinking to myself, boy, she's going to cuss him out. Mm-hmm. He came out the house, and I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it afterwards, you know what I mean? She went, Jamie. He said, yes. He said, you hungry? He said, yes. All right, come sit down. Jeez. We were both in the kitchen. 
Rice and peas, yeah, and all of that, yeah. Mom, Proper things. My mum, right, my mum there, spring, spring up things, warm up, warm mm. up food, warm up food, warm up food. So she's, she made a, put a plate for Jamie, a plate for me. I'm mm. eating mine slow, bro, because I'm thinking to myself, What's gonna I happen? I don't want to finish this meal because I know that I'm gonna get it. I know yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. It's, it's a trick. 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 Right? So I mean, Jamie, by the other hand, yam off the food. Clap, clap, clap. Mm. Two minutes. Plate done. Mum said, Jamie, you like the food? He said, she said, you want some more? He said, yes, please. Nah, get yes, out of here right now, bro. One and one more big plate. Jamie yam the plate. Jamie had three plates of food. No way. Right? I swear on my life, nah. And you must know because you're from a culture. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, know the black culture and the black Come people on. and then right? Uh, you know we had me. Now you know that black women love when they cook people to mm-hmm. love their food. Mm-hmm. So from then, Jamie was in. It was cool. I said to Jamie, Jamie, you're coming back tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> said to me, I'll come back tomorrow for some good food. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, like yeah. my food? You like my food better than yeah, your mom's yeah. food? <laughs> he said, Dude, Big up Bob Z, man. Tomorrow. So after that, almost every day, Jamie was around my yard for food. Okay. Imagine that that door that's been opened. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then next thing from that, my mum said, oh, I got my, used to be my mum said, I've got a white friend at work. Mm-hmm. She went from white friend to my friend Sue at work. Mm-hmm, to, mm-hmm. to my friend Sue at work to the lady coming around for, for, for dinner one time. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. all of a sudden now, uh, because of get people getting with each other, understanding each other, that all kind of went. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm saying this story because the same way I'm giving you my own two individual yeah. stories, that's what happened to the whole area. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, if come that on. That makes sense. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah, sure yeah. Enough people out there that have got similar stories with their own parents. 100%. Black and white. But yeah, that's yeah. what happened over. And then and then now, then the area came to when the times when you're talking about, mm. where it's multicultured, everyone's walking around as normal. But yeah. when I was growing up, that weren't the case. Mm. That was, it, it was still it was still like a, a whites over there, blacks over there. But now, it's quite multicultural as, as most of London is. Yeah, of course, man. And 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 that story, like you said, it's 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 normal because again, it's that's the experience that you know people have gone through where it it's things have been planted in their in their head like oh this person's like this or this this certain race is like this and yeah. like we're all the same, man. Do you know what I mean? And it's yeah. like everyone's got their bad moments, everyone's got their good moments. Like do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, it, we we're all the same. <coughs> but um, going back to to talking? what. You know, I tell, on, people, just say, turn me, I tell people so much that and I tell them all the time that I know a bad person that's white, that's black, that's Asian, everything. that is everything. I know a good person that is all these things. Mm-hmm. I know I know a disabled person that's all these things. Mm-hmm. I know a rich person that's all these things. I know mm-hmm. a poor person. So really and truly, what do you talk about color then? It's just mm-hmm. people, isn't it? You're either good or you're not good. You're either nice or you're not nice. You're either, mm-hmm. you're either calm or you're not calm. It's, and I want to treat people who they are. Mm-hmm. That is the biggest thing for me, you know. Hundred percent, man. Hundred percent. And going back to what you were saying, though, in terms of like, where, you know, a simple activity like going to get a loaf of bread and milk and whatnot, you have to be maneuvering and doing things like that. Then that build anxiety, like, as you're getting older, because those things are like to to some people would be like, oh man, like that's crazy that you had to do that. But then growing up in the area, like you're saying, that like, the way you did that, that start become like your normal when it shouldn't be normal. Do you know what I mean? It shouldn't be, that shouldn't be a normal thing for you just to go up the road to get a a, a cheese or something like that yeah. to be, do you know what I mean? Running down. So, yeah, but mm. what 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 did that do to you internally like as well? Like, Did, did it bring out anxiety or anything like that? No, you know, it's, <laughs> I think it's just the way that my mum brought me up. Okay. Is that my mum always brought me up to find a way. Mm. Actually, the mum would always say, God will find a way. Mm. Right? So that was always that saying. So that means if anything, Whatever's happening in life, God will find a way. Mm. So I've always kind of approached life like that, if that makes sense. As in, mm. when I when I would be going up, when I'd be going up to, to, to Sainsbury's or whatever, I wouldn't be thinking in my mind, oh, they might not gonna catch me or oh, they're I'm just going for a jog in it. And if yeah, they yeah. might come, I'm gonna I'm gonna burn them out. Okay. I wouldn't even be thinking about them more time. I'll just be doing my thing, just going on, but I'll be watching around me, see what I'm saying. Now it's different now, say it's our turn to the kids now. Mm. And what I mean by that is when I was growing up, the worst thing that's gonna happen to you is really, you get beat up, mm-hmm. right? Now, if you if you cross against some real, real, real bad man, like real, 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 Serious, shit, yeah. guys, they may have a knife on them, right? But even then, back in the days, the guys who are real bad men, they're not gonna trouble you mm-hmm. because they only bad men only trouble bad men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understand For what sure. I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. the boys who carry the knives would only really trouble the boys who have knives with them. Mm-hmm. So I w- I wasn't so much in fear of my life. It was more. 
I don't mind if they have a fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it wasn't so bad for me. But I'll be honest with you, growing up now, if I was growing up now in, a, in the same situation, so I know there's certain areas with all these post-Cold Wars and all this kind of stuff where a, a youth can't go to school or when he's going to school, he's have to cross over a different post-Cold and it could be a, a threatening situation for him. If I'll be honest with you, if I was living that life, <clears throat> I'd have a lot of anxiety, I think. Mm, for sure. Yeah, I think that's because it's not a fact of getting beat up. Mm. It's about someone could take your life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. understand what I'm trying to say? I'll be honest with you. So I find I find for us for me it was a thing of you might get beat up. So you just kinda of get on with it for me. Like if you're gonna put your hands on me for fighting it's it's me against you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we do it. We yeah, do yeah. it. I win I, I win or lose. I get up and I, I I live to see another day. Mm. You know, where these days now with the kids is it's, it's yeah, like different. Death. Yeah, it's different. It's life yeah, yeah. So uh, it, 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 even though it, I didn't really get that much anxiety, I could understand if someone is going through anxiety. Mm. I can understand, you know, talk about football and stuff like that. I understand kids who want to be footballers, but for them to get to training, they're going to have to cross over or walk through a, a different platform. Mm. And, and you know, do coaches understand this? Do yeah, coaches no. know that? Maybe where this kid lives. Yeah, maybe maybe he's late because he's scared to come to training. Maybe mm -hmm. he didn't come training because he was on the way to training. And he saw a bunch of bot men at the train station, and he thought, "Boy, I no, I'm turning that. back." You, you, you see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And that for me it was different. As in, there was there was nothing in my life to stop me. The only mm -hmm. thing that could have stopped me was me. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, Powerful. I wasn't gonna let nothing stop me, so I kept on going. Where these days, there's so many other thing elements um, that could possibly stop stop someone from from living out their dreams. No, for sure, man. And definitely, like, I've been one of those guys as well that I, I got stabbed myself and, like, it brought that social anxiety to me. So anytime I was around, like, big crowds or anything like that, I'm like, no, I need to get out of here because it, it just, like, it brought back flashbacks and things like that where, you know, what I went through where I had to spend, like, a month in, 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 in hospital, you know, critically conditioned and things like that. So, yeah, that brought that out in me, but it's only when... I got back into football because there was a period of time where once I didn't get my contract um, from Northampton town, I was just like, yeah, well, I'm seeing the people in my area that it's physical cash around them and I'm seeing what they've got. And I'm like, well, clearly at them times, if you're 16, you're not getting a contract, you're not good enough. Do you know what I mean? So, but there was obviously things, like he said, the coaches don't know. There's things that was going on at home where they're not tapping into that and this is why i'm saying we need people like yourself like where you can tap into that because you can see certain patterns that people are going through and you're like <clears throat> wait hold up that's not really, really right because i've seen that before do you know what i mean where yeah. i can tap into it and be like yo like gee what's going on is everything all right then it's yeah, down to yeah, that individual yeah. to kind of dive into you know the, the conversation but yeah man that like things like that even where you said about um you know the boys saying that yeah gift you're you're cool now you you you're one of us where that was the same thing when in school i wasn't a cool guy when i when i was coming in do you know what i mean so right. like my english wasn't the best like english, english is yeah. not my first language so yeah. it was like i'm turning up to school and i haven't got the latest stuff and so you're not you're not yeah. a cool guy yeah. do you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. then it's only when i started playing football they're like, oh, wait, hold up, who's who's he? Like, when did you come? When did you come to this school? I'm like, I've been here since year seven. Like, what do you mean? Like, we're we're in year nine now. This is two, three years deep. What you never see me? Do you know what I mean? So they're like, okay, and then that's when you know you, you start getting acceptance. And like you said, football's yeah. a beaut. It can be a beautiful thing. It can be the hardest thing in the world, but it can bring people together. And and that was one of the things that made me feel more confident in in my ability as a person. Do you know what I mean? And then yeah. years down the line, when I didn't get it, things were going on, getting into the wrong crowd, social anxiety afterwards, after I'm getting stabbed. And and it's like, what brought me back was the love of football. And I was like, no, nah, I need to, I need that again. Like restarting again, stripped it all back and going to like all different clubs and do you know what I mean? Non-league and you know yourself, it's a, yeah. it's a tough world out there. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So, but um like let's let's dive into the football now because we've, we've gone yeah. into some deep topics yeah like <laughs> when you signed for Watford how, how did that come about because back in the days you had to be special there's not many scouts back in the days like like these days everyone's a scout your auntie's a scout your mom's yeah. a scout like everyone's a scout these days do you know what I mean back then you had to be yeah. a very very good player to get picked up talk to us about how that came about Watford and and what yeah. was that like man all right so <laughs> 
Yeah. Please remember. So I'm gonna give you a little background first of all. So my dad, my dad was a bishop. Okay. All right. And my mum, up to now, she's still deep in the church. You okay. understand? Me, yeah. So back in the days, Sunday football can't run. Mm hmm. Church okay, time. Now, mm -hmm. Right. So now, if you look at, you know, you talked about scouting. Mm -hmm. Most people got scouted from Sunday league football. You understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's how most people got scouted from. Mm -hmm. If you was good enough, you played Sunday league at a certain level when you got scouted. Blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. So I played for midweek teams, played Collins Fields. I played Market Road. Cheese, Market Road. Yeah, hey. In the week. Yeah, yeah. You know, pure ballers came out of there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pure, pure. Yeah, long yeah, yeah. Long yeah. list of bad names, long list. Well, when it wasn't the new Market Road that it is today. Oh, yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, nah, concrete, nah, nah. you know what I mean? It was you different. Know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. That, that, yeah, old, yeah, that, yeah. Old, that old hard score where hard. only you went there, if you went there back in the days and you weren't on it, you get exposed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All it's the long. ballers went to Market Road. Yeah, if yeah. If you're yeah. from North London, East London, even West London ish, mm -hmm. and you're a baller, you play for a team that plays at Market Road mm -hmm. on, a, on a Friday mm -hmm. or, or a Monday. You know Them what I'm saying? Small That's goals as well. Small goals. You got to bang it. Goals. Yeah, yeah. Goals. So long and ones. <laughs> yeah, corners, yeah, yeah. Man. Got corners. corners man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Like yeah, now, yeah. When you, got, you got a small goalkeeper and the goal's up here. It's big. Yeah, you got space. Nah, no, back then you had to hit yeah, corners, yeah. man. Corners. You could be a finishing. Right. Trust me. So anyway, so I used to play with them leagues, all them leagues. I played for my district, is it in the mm -hmm. Camden? Okay. I, for in, I didn't play for Inner London yet. Because I don't think Inner London, they weren't buffing in London yet. Inner okay. London came a little bit older. So I was playing for Inner the Camden. So no one ain't really watching people unless they play for County or Sunday League. Yeah, yeah. What happened is um, there was a boy called Terry Bowles. And Bowles, he played on my, on my district team for Inner the Camden. And my district team, when we were fourth year, year, year 10, I think, year 10, we won the national championship, basically, mm -hmm. for the whole districts in the whole country. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. just trying to show you how good our district yeah, yeah. was. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah, no, that's our serious district, district serious stuff. Yeah. Most, most of the man in our team was playing for Arsenal, mm -hmm. Tottenham, this team, that team. I was one of the only ones that weren't in a club. Okay, right? similar to me, bro. Well, right, so there was a guy called um, Carl Dixon mm -hmm. that used to come and watch the games because he, Terry Bowles' was a Sunday team was a team called Arvinsville. Okay. And Carl Dixon was the manager, right? Some teams from Hackney, Queen's Park, Queen's, mm -hmm. Queensbridge Road. Mm -hmm. That's where we used to train, right? So Carl was the manager. So he used to come and watch the games just to watch the games. And I think they told him that I was a good player. So now Carl spoke to, spoke to enough people in the past have told my, my mum, why well, I still want to play my spins play on Sundays. Like, can we get him to play on Sundays, mum? Mm -hmm. no, so mm -hmm. it came to a point where I'm not going to play Sundays. So everyone's saying, come play for my Sunday team. My mum's not going to let me play, mm -hmm. right? Carl spoke to my cousin Michael at one of the games. I don't know what happened, bro. I don't know what happened. And I rate this man up to now. He managed to convince my mum that I can play Sunday league football and he'll make sure that I get dropped to church by 1pm. Sick. So imagine this, right? There's sometimes we're playing a match and say the match has gone on a bit late and like I need to leave by 12.30 just say, mm -hmm. to get to the church. One of the other dads would take their kid off the pitch, right, to, to drive me to church. <laughs> that's but that's boy, that's commitment, oh, man. Right, but that's because of Carl. Mm -hmm. Carl Dixon made that happen, right? So I'm, I don't, I don't want to go to, I want to stay on the stern line. So Carl Dixon made that happen for me. So that's mm -hmm. why I love that guy for now. But the reason why I'm, I'm bringing Carl into it because Carl was a Watford scout. Okay. Right. So when I started playing for Arvinsville, and I started doing well at Arvinsville. He started telling the Watford people that he's got another player that is good as well. Mm -hmm. So he brought me along to Brent Cross. And then from then, the, the, the history, like, I just got in there. You know what I mean? Got in there, played well, they liked me. And then, boy, saying that, it wasn't so easy, you know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, gonna to go on with it. I'm I was going to say, it couldn't have been that easy, bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah, do your thing, man. Baby, right? Yeah, yeah. That's my baby. So that part was easy. I went by easy as in, you turn up, you train. Because mm -hmm. I was a part of Carl's guys. They, they liked us. We had about about like seven or eight of us that played for the Arvinsville on the Sunday league, all played for the Watford, like mm -hmm. the London Watford as well. So we, our team was good because we all played together. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So to, uh, when you reached, was it, under 13s, I think. That's when they had a, they had a Watford um, Development Centre in Brent Cross mm -hmm. and they had the Watford Development Centre in Watford. Okay. When you reach under 13s, you come together and they pick the best players and you train in Watford. Okay. Right? So that's where it was. So we used to train there. But the coaches there, the coach there didn't like me. He didn't like all us London boys. So when we used to turn up for games, 
normally you play four quarters. Mm-hmm. We'd only play one quarter. Okay. You know What's that? Right. Twenty-five so we, minutes you're playing. 20, yeah, twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you play like two of us in one quarter, and then two in each quarter. So we're never all together. We can never all link up and do mm-hmm. our thing. It's mm-hmm. just two, two, two. Right. So it was what it was. So. It is what it is. I've been told we're going to get released and, and in the season because you know you hear rumours and people talking mm-hmm. and bits and bobs and so on. So for me, I'm just playing my football anyway. I told my cousin Michael, he's like, no, what's that? Just carry on doing your thing. No, what's that? So anyway, we had a game, um, Ipswich away. Okay. So <laughs> playing Ipswich away, we get to Houston and the train, the man in the train station said, boy, your, your train's delayed. So say, for example, the train is 8.04. 8.04, we get to Watford for... 20 to 20 to nine, and then we run to the to the to the ground, and we get there by nine o'clock. Yeah, standard, right? So by now, the, the man saying that our train is going to be nine o four. Okay. So it's like, well, we're going to miss we're going to miss the the, the leave time. Mm-hmm. So I had a mobile phone in time, so I called them and I said, well, we're going to be late. But I was like, the coach at the time said, just go home. We don't need you. Don't worry, go home. Mm-hmm. Right. So all of us went home. So I'm walking home now. I call my cousin. He said, what's up? I said, ah. Um, the train's been delayed, blah, blah, blah. They told us to go home, so I'm going to go home. He goes, what do you mean that you're going mm. home? Said, I'm going home. He goes, no, no, no. Turn around. I said, what do you mean? He said, go to Watford. When you get to the ground, call me. I said, what do you mean? Like, said, I'm not going to do that journey. Yeah. Mm. yeah, he said, go to the ground. So, listen, <laughs> my kids, my sons are like, are like me when I was a kid. As in, if I tell my son son, they'll do it. Mm-hmm. You understand? They got that. Mm-hmm. They got that blind faith in me that mm-hmm. if I say no, I said, just do it. They'll say, okay, dad. They won't want to do it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. So come on. It, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that blind faith in Michael, so I didn't mm-hmm. want to do it. Would have made them laughing at me because they're going home, but I done it. All right. And this one saying about luck as well and a bit of faith. So I went to Watford, got to the ground, called Michael. Mike, come here. No one's here. Can I leave now? He said, all right, you can leave now. As I'm leaving, I'm walking up the road. Kenny Jacket comes driving down the road. Okay. Right. So he goes, run. I, I got my Watford tracksuit on. Okay. So he goes, we 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 doing, son? So I said to him, well, I told him what happened. Blah blah blah. They left me. He goes, well, my under 15s are playing at Stanmore. Come and play for us. You know, he goes, I like that. Okay. He goes, you like you made, you made you made the journey. I like that. Come play for us. Mm-hmm. They put me in the car. I helped him with the kit. He brought me to the game. I played. I think like half the game. I scored. I think three or four goals. After the game, he said. You know, bad, you know, son. So he brought me to the train station, gave me some money to get a ticket. Because before, we used to bump the trains all the time. Come on. <laughs> so we had no mm-hmm. money. Mm-hmm. So he gave me money. He said, you've got money? I said, no, nah, no, nah, I got no money. So he gave me some money so I could buy a ticket. Um, which I never bought. But he bought me some money to buy a ticket. Definitely not buying. You know, went home. <laughs> about, I don't see Kenny for about three, four months. And I think, like, the same thing, they're talking about the same thing, we're going to get released, so on. Our coach was sick. So Kenny took our game. It was against QPR away. Mm-hmm. I remember these games. I can remember them like they're tomorrow because they're vivid, big moments in my life. And there was me and a guy called Daniel Brown. And me and Brown, he played the whole game. He played for the whole game. I think I scored about eight, nine goals. Like something mm-hmm. stupid and ridiculous like that. Brown, he must have set up like six of them. And after the game, he sat us both down. After he had the team talk, he sent everyone in. He sat us both down. He said, I've heard a lot of bad things about you guys, about you two. He goes, um... He goes, but I'm letting you know, no matter what happens when you're out of there, when you're at home, in your area, wherever it happens, he goes, don't listen to what anyone says, I've got you. He goes, you just listen to what I say from now on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? And the reason why he said that is because we used to fight on the, on the train. Right? We had, we'd been jumped before a man had a knife sometime and tried to stab us, tried to stab my guy Clive, so we rushed him, bust him up. Mm-hmm. Was, and the man came to the knife, was banging on the window with a mini mm-hmm. bus. So like all the Watford stuff, they see mm. us as mad kids, innit? Like we always fighting because we're from London, and people are looking at us. We didn't know how to articulate ourselves properly. Do you understand? So when people are looking at us, so we're loud, and they're trying to talk to us in a certain way. I, I wasn't skilled enough to articulate myself to make them feel like really small. Mm-hmm. So the way I done it was more being more what what then? What's the problem? What's mm-hmm. the problem? And then sometimes people will come back, and then we'd end up fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. They kind of saw us as like a bunch of bad dudes, basically. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. But Kenny saw beyond that. Kenny saw beyond that. Kenny was like, don't worry what happens outside. I've got you. And he came out to my mum's house, met my mum, talked to my mum. I didn't go to school. Okay. Right? Cause I hated school. I was very good at school. And that's the problem. I was like top A student, mm-hmm. but I didn't hardly, hardly went. And I was still top of school. I, okay. I'm like, I don't go to school and I'm still top. Like, what am I going for? Mm-hmm. I'll do the work at home. 
I'm still at <laughs> home. I hate the school, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so my mum contacted Kenny behind my back, and I thought that they were doing me a favour, but my mum and Kenny, they had an agreement. Okay. So I, used to, I used to go and train with the first team. Okay. So I was like 14, 15, and I used to, instead of, like, well, let me spill it out properly. If I didn't want to um, go to school, I will just go to Watford and train with the first team. Bro. Yeah. You, you had it good. You had it good. Right, but remember, yeah. it's all because of Kenny. Mm-hmm. Only because of Kenny. Mm-hmm. No one else was interested in that. Only because Kenny Jacket, I was going to train with the youth team, and mm-hmm. he let me go and train with the first team as well. Mm-hmm. Only because Kenny Jacket made that happen. Does that make okay. sense? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So someone saw beyond. He looked beyond, he looked beyond my, my skin. Mm-hmm. He looked beyond, he looked beyond this tall, lanky boy mm-hmm. who's got a bit of an attitude. And he saw a good kid who just wants to win, that wants mm-hmm. the best out of himself, that's frustrated because he don't have nice boots. His boots have got holes in them. You know what I mean? He saw these things. And he got me boots. He, mm. he bought, I don't know if he bought them or he got the club to buy them, but he got me boots. I had my mm. boots. Then after I'd done Gee, the my couple, ones. couple of months, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, bro? But yeah, yeah, back then, yeah. I used to get one pair of boots a year, even mm. internationals. They were plastic boots, right? That's a one pair. When mm. that pair is bust up, done. duct tape. Mm-hmm. Duct tape. Mm-hmm. Every game, I put my boots on and I duct tape them around. So that, that's the duct tape was my boot. Mm-hmm. Basically. You mm-hmm. understand? Mm-hmm. I connect these together. After the game, I take the duct tape off, the boot falls apart. Right. And, but that was Crazy. what he I didn't care. Mm. But, but Kenny saw that there was something more than this kid, this little ruffian kid. Mm. You understand? Mm-hmm. He's picky head or whatever. He saw more than that. And he thought there's something in me. And that's, that's the journey. And Kenny gave me my debut. So let me keep going on if I keep talking about Kenny all the time. That's cool, man. <laughs> nah. Kenny, remember, Kenny, Kenny saved my life. He mm. saved my career basically when he met me that time, that day. Right? And he made me play up. When I was under 15, he played in the youth team. Right? When I was under 16, I played the whole season in the youth team. The top goal scored 29 goals. I scored 21. When I was a first year scholar, Kenny gave my debut in the first team. The same man we're talking about, you know. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah? Powerful. Now, even now in my life, even now in my life, I'm coaching. Kenny's the first first team manager to say, you know, I trust you to coach my players in the first team environment. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I go and I go and I coach. I go and coach the players at Portsmouth because he trusts me. Like mm-hmm. this is this is like a how many years? I'm 41 now. And, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Is, the, the man's been helping me out for the last. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like mm-hmm. a blessing. It's like he's like a guiding angel that came into my life. So when I see things like that, for me personally, I feel that I've got to help someone else in it. So that's why when I'm helping other people, I try and see what's in them and I try mm-hmm. and help them because. And anyone who I help, I've got, I've helped coaches, I help players. Anyone I help, I tell them I need one thing from you. And if you don't give me this, then we can't do it. We can't, I can't help you. I need you to help someone else. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's mm-hmm. it. That's what I tell them. The only thing I need from you, I need you to help someone else. Because if I'm helping you, that means hopefully I'll do some positive stuff. That means there must be a time when you can help someone else. Mm-hmm. So, and that's so it, man. <laughs> And you're not even yeah. asking for something in return for yourself, though. Again, okay. just shows no. your character. Do you know what I mean? Where no. you're saying, I want you to go and help somebody else. Because then after yeah. that, it's a trickle effect. If I'm helping you, you help him. And, and it becomes a better community. Do you know what I mean? So that's powerful, though, bro, man. Honestly, that's a powerful, like, because some people do things to help others in for something in return. You're not even asking for that. Do you know what I mean? That's a, that's a deeper level of, of what the positive impact that you're trying to make. Do you know what I mean? So that's why I'm glad that you got into this story because it couldn't have just been like, yeah, I've gone through here. And then, do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, yeah. I know there was something going on for you to get to that yeah. level because, and what you said in terms of like the luck thing, where I'm a true believer of where you create your own luck. If you didn't go and if you didn't phone Michael and, and say to him, yeah. listen, this is what's happening. Like you could have been like with one of your boys and just gone back home and there wouldn't be no Kenny jacket. And then there wouldn't yeah. be no... 41 years down the line or whatever going Portsmouth yeah, yeah. and do you know yeah, what I mean yeah. and to maintain that relationship obviously you would have had to do something that was valuable as well for him do you know what I mean in right. terms of where he's seen beyond what you can do but you're also a valuable person to him do you know what I mean yeah. so it, it's nah, it's powerful and it's crazy how when you get older these dots start connecting you're like right okay now I know why that happened and do you know what I mean yeah. if it wasn't for that I wouldn't be here and it's but when you're young you don't really see that you're you 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 need it now I want it now I want it like what no I'm not doing that if it's not making sense but again it's about being open-minded and having the people around you like you're saying the Michaels that you've had and 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 trusting these people where you're like you know what I'm not too sure I don't know if I want to go what all the way what for for me to get turned back you know for them to say nah mate you're not playing but do you know what I mean no that's powerful but then 
again, there's more, there's more um, challenges ahead. Like you've broken into the first team, you've done your thing, then you got injured. Like what, like what was going on? Because obviously you're you're one of the most like up, um, hyped players at them, them times as well as a young player coming through scoring goals. Like you won um, Golden Boot um, one year as well, and it was like, do you know what I mean? So you was doing your thing, and then the injury hit. What was going through your mind? Like, what's what's happening? Talk to us, paint a picture for us. Like, because there's loads of, there's been loads of players that's gone through the same thing or probably going through the same thing. Like, even like the Joel Gomez is now at the moment, like where he's got a serious injury. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. and he's yeah. probably going through. The other day I was watching Hector Bellerin's documentary about his injury. And yeah. I was like, you know what? I've got more respect for this guy, you know, mm. seeing what you have to go through because people think, oh, because you're a footballer, you're making 150 a week. You're good, man. Don't worry about it. You don't have no emotions. You'll be all right. I'll take that injury for 150 a week. But yeah. it's not yeah. that. Like, you're dealing with a lot of things internally. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. just talk to us about what was going through your head, man, because you're on the top of the world right now. Right. So, imagine that. Yeah. So, I'm going to go back a couple of weeks. Just a couple of weeks. Um, mm-hmm. I don't want to go too far. So, just imagine two weeks before I get told that Arsene Wenger, um, it's been watching me. Tottenham are watching me. Newcastle are watching me. And remember um, back in the days, Arsene Wenger, he bought Freddie Jeffers. Yeah. Because so, what he wanted to do, he wanted to buy English English talent. That's mm-hmm. when he first came in, he wanted to buy young English talent and then try and train them up. So I was one of his, one of his projects he was looking at to, mm-hmm. to that. Tottenham are looking at me because Arsenal was looking at me. So Tottenham was looking yeah, at yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, come on. Newcastle, there was a there was a string between Newcastle, Wimbledon, me and Carl Court. Okay, I remember him. Because Carl Court, Carl Court was at Wimbledon, mm-hmm. and they were saying that Newcastle were looking at me and him, and it was either they were gonna if they take Carl Court, then Wimbledon will take me. Okay. And then and then if Carl Court stays at Wimbledon, then Newcastle will take me. Mm-hmm. So imagine I'm hearing all this two weeks before, I've just got called up for the under twenty ones as well. Mm-hmm. So I was playing under eighteens with Michael Owen, mm-hmm. and he was killing it. He got moved up to the 21. Up in the first couple of games, he, he weren't having great success, but then they moved me up. Okay. Because he wanted to play with a big man. Remember, Michael mm-hmm. always wanted to play with a big man. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was this game that. Mm-hmm. And, and before Crouchy and all them big men, you mm-hmm. understand, mm-hmm. right? So me and Michael Owen, me were, that was my boy. Back in the days, me and Michael Owen were tight. Mm-hmm. I mean, tight, 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 like tight back in the days, right? And then he moved up to the 21. So I just got called up for the 21. So now in my mind, it's like the world's my oyster. The Michael Owen's mashing up at, at Liverpool. If me and him have a good partnership, Liverpool might end up being interested yeah, later yeah, down the yeah. line. Mm-hmm. Arsenal, Tottenham, love the LS Seven. So this is, and it's not no big time. I'm just, I'm, I'm genuinely just, just having fun. Every training session was just fun. I enjoyed games, just having fun, man. Mm-hmm. Then we come to the big game now against Sunderland. So at that moment, Sunderland was top of the league, right? So the top of the league, we was probably I think about seven or something, but we was trying to get into the playoffs at that moment. I've been having a good season. So I scored one of the best goals I scored in my life that game. So they scored first, 1-0. I think Kevin Phillips scored. Nick Wright scored to equalise 1-1. One, one. And then Ben Aurora took a long throw. Like a long, long throw. You see the ball, the throw, the ball looked like it's like 100 metres in the air. I got on my chest, bounced on my chest, and left foot. I followed it in, right? It's on YouTube still now. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, I ain't gonna lie, I watch it every now and then. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you need to. Yeah, that one, that Come one, on. yeah, that one was a nice one. So then, when I scored that, that's 2 1. So all of a sudden, I've been called up for England. At that moment, it's like. Phew. Yeah, nothing can go wrong right now. Um, nothing can stop me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I was at that, I felt, I genuinely felt like I was just floating. You know, you just play. I was just playing. Autopilot. Yeah, autopilot. Mm. You understand what I mean? And then the tackle come. And it's funny because now I'm older. When I got older, I realised how we've done it. Okay. He slowed down and he waited for me. So he could have got to the ball early and just cleared the ball. Mm. But he slowed down. And I thought he wasn't, I thought I was quicker than him. I could get there and nick it and I was in on goal. He slowed down and he gave me one of them tackles that, you know, in the 1990s. Yeah, yeah. You, you, if that's your teammate, give someone a tackle, you tell your teammate, good tackle. Mm, mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Give me one of those ones. It was dirty, but it was a good it was a tackle. Mm. And um, yeah, from then, it was madness. It was, it was uh, I went from, and I told you a minute ago, I was floating. Yeah. yeah. I went from floating to all of a sudden, it's like just on the ground in a pile. 
you know, within two weeks of the injury, I couldn't do this. Wow. I couldn't do this. So I, this one, my left arm comes to my hair. And it couldn't, it won't, I couldn't bend it anymore. All right? I couldn't clench a fist. Um, I couldn't put my clothes on. Like my mum had to help me put my clothes on and take my clothes off. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't drive. I was like a cripple all of a sudden. Arthritis it took over my body. Um, and I went from being told two weeks earlier, Arsenal, Tottenham, blah, 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 England call up, to now sitting in front of a specialist, specialist after specialist after specialist, mm -hmm. telling me no one has played with arthritis before. Um, you can't play professional sports with arthritis. Um, it's either you retire now or you'll be crippled by the time you're 40. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> it's one of the things that, yeah, yeah, yeah. to be honest with you, retiring was never in my mind, you understand? <laughs> so mm -hmm. when they tell you about crippled business, I said, boy, so I, I'll be crippled if I'm 40. I'd, by then, my career's over, you understand? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was still my aim was how can I get back? And I was on steroids. Um, they had me on all kind of stuff, you know? I thought all the stuff I was on, I don't even know. If I, if yeah, I, yeah. I don't even know the names of them, but I know they had mean this kind of steroid, that steroid, and all kind of stuff, messing with my mood, messing with my head, um, feeling miserable. Mm -hmm. You know, you've gone through the emotions anyway, but I've got these extra tablets in me that yeah, I yeah. used to have. They've enhanced it even more. Right, you see what I mean? Mm. Just, it, was a mad, it was a mad time where, you know, Michael, Michael, my mum at that time as well, but Michael as well, Michael especially, was, was he was the rock for me. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I started getting some, some, I started doing some stuff I shouldn't be doing. I started getting some bad, not moving with some of my bad friends a little bit, to be honest with you, at, at one point, because my head was gone. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. my head was gone and, and going out and being out late was actually better than doing nothing all day. So it, I kind of got into some little bad habits, only for a little bit of time, but it was Michael that brought me out of it the other side. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing for me was when I got the phone call from Graham Taylor and he said to me, Gif, I said, what's up, what's up boss? He said, I'm coming, I went, when you come in, I want to see you. So I went in there and he said, well, um, Elwin has sent me an article. I said, what's that? It was an article of an uh, uh, injection called Embryo mm -hmm. Medication. He said, it's big in America, they're doing trials over in America, but Elwin said that he'll pay for your treatment and for you to fly over there. Wow. Elton John paid for my treatment um, for me to fly over to America. I flew over there with my wife at the time and my first wife. And we went over there, we spent some time <clears throat> over there. I got the treatment and that saved my life, man. It saved my career. Mm -hmm. You know, I, saved, I can't save my life because if I would have retired then, um, there wasn't the support system that there are now for young yeah, footballers yeah. Who, who retire early. And I think I would have ended up being on the road and if I'll be honest with you, and doing things that I shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Doing, mm -hmm. doing things that now I'm older, I'm glad I never done and never got into. But yeah, yeah, when yeah. you're young, when you're young and the man's them out there making money as well, I probably would end up just slipped into that kind of lifestyle, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, that's why I say Elton saved my life. <laughs> Not just my career, oh. but he saved my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Powerful, man. And do you know what it is like? Just hearing your, just a little brief background of where you grew up as well. And it's like, you know, the things that you had to encounter when you're young and it's like adversity and all these things where you turned something negative into a positive where you said, like, you'd had to go to the shop and you was like, I'm going for a jog. So whether or not, like, something happens, but I'm going for that jog to keep it moving or whatever, to, to, to make mm -hmm. things a bit quicker. And so it's mm -hmm. like, you're being creative and it's like when things like this hit you, it could have easily gone left, but you're still finding ways to to, to go and make things happen. And, and I'm sure like with Elton John, where it wasn't a thing where he was just like, oh yeah, I'm going to sort out Gifton with this surgery or whatever, we're going to we're gonna take him here. There's something that you've done again, like for the club, which you did, obviously you helped with the promotion and, and scoring mm -hmm. goals and things like that. So things like that, people will never forget, do you know what I mean? And at mm -hmm. that time he was the owner. So like, you know what I mean? There's, there's yeah. things that you've done, there's things that you've, you've, you've earned these things as well because you've given back. 
you know what I mean? Yeah. So as much as he did help, which without a doubt, you've got to thank him and whatnot, but you've earned the right as well where in terms of like, I've given back to this community. I've given back to the club as much as I can where yeah. I've put myself in on the line, which you did. Like, yeah. it could this could have been a, a, a life-threatening thing, you know what I mean? Which yeah. you come out stronger and you're doing positive things till now. So, nah, man. You know what you're again, saying there? You know, sorry to cut you there. No, sorry, go on. Sorry. Just what, what you're saying there is, it's something I've learned since I've retired. Yeah. And and a, not, a young, not a lot of footballers understand this when they're playing. Is that when you're in the industry and you're playing, mm. you believe that the game loves you mm-hmm. and everyone loves you. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. So you think that everyone is, whatever things people are doing for you, they're doing like you a favour. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? So yeah, you get yeah. a new contract. It's mm-hmm. a favour. Like, yeah, yeah. And what, when you retire, you realise no, no, I was doing them the favor. Exactly. <laughs> I was doing exactly. I was doing them the favor, mm-hmm. and you only realize that after you finish playing. Mm-hmm. When the, when the, when the phone calls stop coming in, when people stop picking up the phone for you, mm-hmm. then you realize, okay, I was just there for now. Now that I, I've got no use for that, those mm-hmm. people no more. They don't want me, mm-hmm. and that's one thing that all all young footballers have to understand is they have to understand you're just a number. You're Trust. a footballer, yeah. and you're playing. So what you got to do is look after yourself mm-hmm. so that you and your family and your loved one are good. Whether mm-hmm. that's financially, mental health wise, everything, you know. Back in the days, I, I missed birthdays. I missed all kind of stuff. Sacrifices. To go and train on a Sunday mm-hmm. and to do stuff like that. And if I'll be honest with you, if I'd done it again now, I would question some of those times. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to say I would question of some of those times. Not all of them, but there's a couple of times I'd think I gave you everything Mm-hmm. And then as soon as I had a few bad games, you just got rid of me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see what I mean? And that's why me personally, with my role and what I'm trying to do, I try and treat people as people first. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're a person first, isn't it? That's who you are first. 100%. Now, what you do or what you're good at or what your love is, that's coming different. But you're a person first. So mm-hmm. I think treat the person. I don't think that's, I don't think that's enough of that is in football, especially with the youth. You're talking about youth football and the young ones. Like, I'm giving examples of when I was a big man, so I mm-hmm. could handle a lot of these things. But you've got them youngsters who are 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, even 19. You get, imagine you're getting your first year pro, you think you've made it, and then you get released nine months mm-hmm. later. And you know, lost. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I think a lot, of people, a, lot of, a lot of kids get agents mess up their heads, people mm-hmm. around them gas, gas them up and tell them stuff, they can, they've made it, they're this, they're that. And not, not enough people are real with them to let them know, listen, you might have a pro contract now, but you're still miles from the first team. You mm-hmm. need to get to the first team. You need to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now, if you do that over the next two years, then you'll be in the first team in two years. Mm-hmm. You've got to grow up for two years before you get there. Mm-hmm. Where, because the industry, the, not industry, the, the life that we're in now, we're in a get it now lifestyle. You understand? Mm-hmm. So the, mm-hmm. the, the way life is now, you get everything now. Yeah, you, if you're seeing right there, right now, you want McDonald's, yeah, yeah, you don't you have can to make it happen. No more. You mm. just make it happen. You understand? If you want a new phone, you make it happen. If I wanna, if I wanna, you tell me a big word. If you say me some big, big speaking, mm. spoky word, and I'm thinking, wow, what word is that? I can type it into, I can type it into my thing right now, and come back. Say, oh yeah, I know what that word. Mm. <laughs> you yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the day, back in the day, you had to go to the library. Mm-hmm. Dictionary. You to the library. Flick those pages and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying. So yeah. we're in a life now where everything is quick now. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the youngsters don't understand that. For certain things to happen, you have to build towards it. There's certain steps that, that get to it. And I think people have to, have to um, teach these kids these steps and be real with them. And mm-hmm. I think when you've got people like myself, like yourself, people that are real, telling these people the steps, they believe it. Because a lot of these kids, they get told stuff in clubs, they don't believe what the coach is telling them. Exactly that. I don't, I don't, I don't believe it. Mm. Does that kind For of sure. make sense? So it's, it's, it's getting that right balance in life. No, for sure, man. I totally agree. We've gone off, a bit. We've gone off on a few things. <laughs> nah, it's cool, man. This is what this is what the pod's about, bro. We're, we're we're diving into deep things where, like I said, it's more than just the footballer. It's the person. Do you know what I mean? And and we all go through these things. And and just to quickly touch on what you were saying, like I remember when um again I always use like for for instance Raheem Sterling to to my players because he don't he don't get the the credit that he deserves because I remember when he made that move like bearing in mind this kid's been doing it since he was 15 you know like youth team level he's been doing the same thing that he's doing now in a first team level that he's doing at 15 so for him to make that jump in the first team and still deliver like 
make a move to from Liverpool to Man City. I don't understand why it was such a big thing. All he did was just make a move across the city and go into, I understand obviously the whole rivalry thing or whatever, but like no one looked at him as a, as a big player at them times. He was just a young prospect, do you know what I mean? And then it was this whole big thing about it. Now he's getting abuse. This guy can't do anything. Whatever he does, it's in the tabloids. So for me, it was like, he's got to look after number one. That's him and his family. Do you know what I mean? Like he said, like he was doing big things for Liverpool all of a sudden because he made a move. Everyone's upset and he's only trying to bet his life. He's trying to bet his family, like his career at the end of the day. Because if you look at it, he's won things as well. Do you know what I mean? He's won things at Man City. So it, it's about, for me, when I hear people talk about, oh yeah, you know, like they helped me out and things like that. No, you helped yourself out because you brought something to the table. If there was nothing that you didn't bring to the table, they're not helping you. Trust me. Do you know what no, I mean? I agree with that. So it's like, it's a give and take. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, yeah. it's, it goes both ways. But like, when, you, when, you're, when you're from a certain background or whatever, not even a certain background, but like, when you come from not a lot and someone mm-hmm. offers you something, it feels like they're mm-hmm. doing you a favour, like you said. That's what I mean. Do you know what exactly. I'm saying? But really yeah. and truly, yeah. they need you. <laughs> Do you know what yeah. I mean? But knowing your worth, it's knowing exactly. your worth, and having people around you that can show your worth from young. There you go. But still keep you, still keep, still keep you um, humble as well. There you, you go. Know, just to talk, just touch on Raheem. I think that <clears throat> the reason why everyone was so hard on Raheem, if you look back in history, they done the same thing to Ashley Cole. Mm-hmm. Right. So when Ash left Chelsea, I mean Arsenal, Arsenal went to yeah. Chelsea. Mm-hmm. They said he was greedy. Mm-hmm. Right. But I always try and explain to people, all right, you work at Sainsbury's, mm-hmm. yeah, and you're getting five pound an hour. And then Tesco's call you up and say, listen, I see you doing big things in Sainsbury's. Yeah, the people them like you, bringing in customers. Mm-hmm. I'll give you I'm going to give you 7 50 10 mm-hmm. per hour. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? I'll be going, I'll be going in the flash. I'm going. After one second. So you'll be going in the flash, and that job you can do until you're 65. Mm-hmm. But you're telling me that a job that a man can't do, he's only going to do until he's 35, 40. You're telling me you shouldn't go. Mm-hmm. No, because it's about the badge. What do you mean no. about the badge? Mm. What do you mean about the badge? What do you mean about the badge? What about the, what about the badge? Mm. It's not every single player is a legend at a club. Not every single player that plays for a club is a legend. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. There's some mm-hmm. players that come and go, and there's some players that stay for many years and they class them as a legend. Do you see what I'm going to say? So fair enough, they might not class Raheem as a legend at Liverpool, but he'll be a legend at Man City. Mm-hmm. So and I try to explain it to people and, then, and when they when I explain it like that, it's like, okay, yeah, I understand it a little bit more. Mm. And you also understand Raheem bought him his mum a yard. How is that negative? I don't get it, bro. It's, it can't be negative. Like I don't you, get you're it. buying your you're buying your mum, you're looking after your mum. It can't be negative. Now, mm-hmm. if he if he didn't look after his mum and you're showing his big house that he has with gold taps and his mum's living in a little squat. Then you can be negative. Mm-hmm. That's negative. Then that means mm-hmm. Raheem is some worthless kind of youth. You understand? Mm-hmm. But the man who bought his mum all these million pound big yard, mm-hmm. and then they're gonna they're gonna just publicize it as a negative. Mm-hmm. It can never be a negative. And I gotta rate that man. I got the most respect for Raheem. Hundred percent. As a young man, because I feel that him and his people have done a great job. The way that he's learned to articulate himself. Because mm-hmm. I know for one hundred percent sure. He wants to go and tell him about their bum buckler and about their bad <laughs> You understand? So if you wanna, if you wanna, if you wanna, if you, if you say clean channel, you might Trust wanna take cut that. Yeah. No, it's cool, like, bro. Like, we'll I'm keep sure it real. That, I'm sure that Ryan wants to tell them on certain things. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. But instead, he's very diplomatic mm-hmm. and he's very straight to the point, and he doesn't get wavered when they come with silly mm-hmm. questions. He doesn't get wavered. He sticks mm-hmm. to his point, mm-hmm. and he's very. That guy there is a very. People don't rate him as a clever man, but you don't become Pep's captain if you're stupid. All right. You understand? Okay. You're not know, fifth captain. Even if you're the fourth captain or the fifth captain, no matter. Mm-hmm. You're not a captain if you're stupid. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. So for the fact that the big man De Bruyne is out and and my and, and Raheem's got the back, got the got the armband, that that, that speaks volumes. For sure, man. For that sure. I agree with Raheem, you, Raheem as a person. You no, know, no, sure. big up. You know, big up Raheem. And then again, he's definitely a, yeah. like I said, I use him as an example for all my young players, man. I do. But but um so something again, like I'm a, I'm a big fan of like hearing people come out of their comfort zone and, and go into different territories and 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 growing from them situations. You move to like Spain, America, 
like that's a different world that you're tapping into now. Do you know what I mean? Different language, yeah. Spain, you're, you're, you're doing different things. You know what I mean? The sun's shining over there. You you know what I mean? So it's different. What, what, what made you say, you know what, I'm going to go and do these things. I'm going to go to America. I'm going to go to Spain and, and, and see what happens. Yeah. Um, if I'll be being honest with you, it started from me realizing that I'm never going to be a premiership star. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. So, Remember you said you said you said something about me earlier. You said that I always turn a negative into a positive, right? And that's all my life. So mm-hmm. some of my heavy states start with that bit. I think, oh, poor gift, right? But I realized I wasn't going to be a premiership star because mm-hmm. I got told this. I will never pass a medical at premiership club, right? Because they can't get insurance on me. Mm-hmm. So the only way I'm going to play in a prem is if I get promoted with a club. Okay. Right? Now, if you get promoted with a club, you're not really going to be a premiership star, really, are you? Because realistically, do you know what I'm going to say? Really, yeah, they're going to bring it, you're yeah. Gonna, you're going to go down or whatever, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I thought to myself, well, cool. If I'm not going to be that, I want to have a great experience in mm-hmm. my life. Mm-hmm. So when I finish playing, I can experience it. So moving to Stoke, that was like moving abroad. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, hey, it's yeah. Tuesday night at yeah. Stoke. Right, yeah, to, yeah, moving to Stoke was that that was a different situation there, right? So when I went to Stoke and I was there for what, three years, between Stoke and Burnley, I was up there for three and a half years. Mm-hmm. That took me out of my comfort zone of living in London. Because mm-hmm. before I, I was a London man, yeah, always yeah. around the man name, always in the end. Even when I lived in Watford, almost every day I'm in London. Mm-hmm. You know, every day I'm driving in just to pop in to see mm-hmm. someone, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. I went to Stoke now when I'm up there, and that's it. So I kind of grew up a little bit more and relied on myself a bit more. So it was, mm-hmm. it was better. Then after that, I just realized, you know what? I love football, but I want to experience different things. Mm. And then Spain, Spanish club coming to me the first time. And I said, no, because I wasn't ready. Yeah, I just moved to Stoke. And I was okay. like, I've just, I've just moved out of London. Like, moved out of my country. I'm not, my country I'm not, trying, London. To, I'm not trying to move even further out now, right? Now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I said, no. Then when I was at Burnley, they, they came again. Okay. But you know what? I'm doing this thing. I'm doing it. Man, I, I have such a big, that was a massive decision in my life. Because living in Spain, learning new language, I, got, I thought that everyone speaks English, you know? So I was like, when I was, I'll give you an example, I'll give you a story. When I was at the, the airport, and we're at the airport when I go to Spain. So I'm there, and my missus at the time, so we're there. And there's a guy next to me, and he's trying to, in front of me, he's talking to the guy, person that had a ticket place mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. airport. And he's trying to talk in his English and he's struggling. <laughs> and I'm laughing. I'm saying, look at my man. My man's struggling. <laughs> to to because in the basics. Like, and she said to me, my gift, that's going to be you in Spain. I said, I said mad. Mm-hmm. That's going be me in Spain. I said, remember, I'm going to play football. So everyone must speak English, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And they're gonna have pe- they must have people around me that speak English that will be around. Mm-hmm. I'm still looking for them now, bro. Mm-hmm. Still looking for them. When I got to Spain, I come off the plane, so some one guy kind of spoke a bit of English. We went straight to the ground to meet the president and everyone. No one speaks no English. They're mm-hmm. all old Spanish men. They don't mm-hmm. speak no English. Mm-hmm. The only thing I knew my first day was, hola. Hola. Adios. <laughs> That's it. You understand? Hello, goodbye. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so now, yet again, me being me, I had a choice, you know, mm-hmm. right? It's either I moved to an English community where everyone's going to speak English for the most part, stuff like that. Comfort or I can go to, a, go to a Spanish community. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I'm going to go to a Spanish community and throw my kids into an English school. Okay. So I've done that first of all. I've got a teacher at home. So I've got a teacher at home to come and teach me two, three times a week. I started to pick up the language. But when I went to go into training, imagine you come into England, right? Well, you know, because you learn English. You learn yeah, yeah. English yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. So you know yourself. The Queen's, the Queen's English and normal English is two separate languages. Mm-hmm. So you might as well speak another language. Okay? <laughs> so imagine that. you probably done this yourself growing up. Where mm-hmm. Imagine you go into the room and say, oh, it's way, way hot in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. Like, yeah. Now yeah. they look at me like... No, no, no. Way, way hot. Yeah. Way, way, way hot in yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> so I was doing that in Spanish. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. was talking proper Spanish and mm-hmm. the boys were laughing at me. And I never understood some of the words they were saying because mm-hmm. it wasn't what I was being taught. I said, you know, that's for that. Te- teacher has to go. Mm-hmm. The teacher was just for the kids. And I just threw myself in. And every day I said to the boys, don't talk English to me. A couple of boys spoke a bit of English. Yeah. I was just talking Spanish, 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 Sick, Spanish. Man. And I picked it up in like six months. I picked it up. Man. Wow, man. 
That's amazing, mm. bro. I think That's my amazing. Like the, kids, the kids learn Spanish. I put them in English school for like two, three months. Mm -hmm. And they're getting lazy. Mm -hmm. So I said, nah, you're getting lazy. Come out. I put them out, threw them in a Spanish school. No two way. Months later, they, yeah. They might, they okay. Two months All later, right. they're talking Spanish. Because That's am listen, my thing is this. Comfort zone. Mm -hmm. yeah? I, I don't like comfort zone. I like to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I'm comfortable, when I'm uncomfortable, I'm at my best. Okay. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't mean uncomfortable. Don't I like to be comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm comfortable. You want to stretch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I have to feel something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so I thought to myself with my kids, I'm always trying to push limits, but I'm letting my kids be comfortable in an English school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where everyone, all the kids in the school, I tell them, asking my kids to teach them English. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, 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 come yeah, out yeah. of that school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of school I learned, you understand? Know, mm -hmm, <laughs> they went to Spanish school and they said to learn. My little, my little son had a couple of fights. He was a big boy now, but back when he was young, he had a couple of fights when he was school. He didn't understand what they were saying to him. Mm -hmm. But then he started playing football. And when he and started then... playing football, that's it. They don't talk no more. Are Same story. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Crazy, man. But then yeah, now, but look, but look at the mindset that you've installed into your kids now where your son's playing in Spain, right? Yeah, bro. So it's like, he's just like, you know what? I'm not going to do the route of trying to get through the academies here. And I'm sure he's probably tried maybe where, yeah. you know, but then it's just like, there's, you know, already over here, there's a lot going on, but also the teaching of football in Spain is different to UK. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So he's learning different things right now where if he does come back to the UK or whatever, yeah. he's, he's got a different language now. He can, I know if I'm in this position, I know how to manipulate the ball and do you know what I mean? Because I've got a different upbringing. So yeah. that's beautiful, man. How's he, how's he doing out there? Yeah, he's enjoying it. He's enjoying yeah. it. It's been hard. As, as you know, he's picking up a new language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's learned a new language during this pandemic as well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So he's got the language plus the pandemic. His grand passed away the other day as well. Oh, so, man. You know, you know, a number of things. Yeah, right? yeah, but yeah. I'm, I'm saying all this stuff, but as, as always, it's not to, to, to someone to cry for me. Of course, I'm course. saying all this stuff but he's getting through it. He's mm -hmm. learned a new language. He's enjoying being somewhere new, new style of football. He's enjoying it. And he will mm -hmm. come out of this even stronger. Do you know what I'm going to mm -hmm. say? So mm -hmm. it's good for him. And I'm, I have to rate him for it because mm -hmm. he's the one that said to me, Dad, I don't want to be in England. He said, I need to go away for a year or two. He goes, might be one year, might be two, might be more, but I need to go away because football in England, it's just the same old cycle of players. Mm -hmm. You know, and go away, do something, learn something new, mm. and then maybe try and come back. So I reckon by the time he comes back, he's going to come back ready. You know, 100%. like... 100%. You know, like ready, yeah, yeah, ready, yeah, ready, yeah, ready, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different upbringing. And right now, he's just, he's just 22, so he's still learning. He's still learning mm -hmm. still now. But it's a good thing. But I think when he's... In a couple of years' time, he's going to be ready. 100%, and that's man. When, that's when people will start seeing Gifford Noah Williams is fun, man. There's your Noah Williams. And and yeah. you know what? And it might not even, bro. It might not even be in the UK. It might just be one of the big clubs in Spain or Germany, wherever. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The world's so big, and this is something that I've experienced myself. Like I've played in in Belgium, I've played in Cyprus, I've gone back to Albania. Like I've coached out in yeah. Italy, I've coached out in Bahrain and in Oman, and and do you know what I mean? It's like when you yeah. go yeah. to these different places, it's like first of all, once you start speaking, they're like, oh, you're English. Like yeah. they're gonna rate you even more, so you're gonna get yeah. access to whatever, like first team, um, access to first teams and whatnot. Where over here, boy, it's difficult. Do you know what I mean? It's you gotta be at a certain caliber, and do you know what I mean? So it's like yeah. having those experiences where I would have never had that if I was in, in England. Do you know what I mean? So I always tell young players, if you got which we're seeing now, a lot of these young boys are going to the Germanys and whatnot to try and get that experience. Yeah. So. Nah, man, it's, it's definitely good, but we're going to, we're going to speed it up to, to where you are now today. Like where, where are you today in terms of football? Like what's your passion? Yeah. What are you trying to do? Um, yeah. What's the, what's the plan? Cause I know you've done a bit of coaching with in, at Billy Ricky and things like that, but yeah. where's, where's Gifton today? 2021. All right. So the journey, when I look at my journey, the journey, the end journey, the end journey, I hope it ends with me being a manager. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I want that journey to end. Um, well, not to end, but then this 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 part of my journey, mm -hmm. the coaching part, I want it to end with being me and a manager. And after that, we'll see what I do after that. But leading up to it, um, right now I work with the PFA. I do coach education, so I'm a coach educator, a coach developer, uh, helping the next bunch of coaches come through for their level two B license, A license. Um, I'm a mentor as well. 
um, help mentor the scholars and clubs um, when they contact me and for anything when they need help or advice or anything like that. Uh, I've got my football academy, which I coach kids and try and get them seen and help them get to clubs and, and develop them. And I've got a bunch of coaches who, good bunch of coaches who all kind of think my way of thinking. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's not just about the money they pay, it's about, about looking after the child and trying to educate them and make them as good as they can be. Um, recently, I've been doing some stuff at Portsmouth with the, with the strikers and the attacking players. And now it's kind of spread it off a little bit more with a little bit more, taking more part in the sessions and mm-hmm. taking a couple of sessions as well with the, with the whole team. And um, the latest thing that's happened to me re- recently is Grenada Football Association. Oh. They've got a project basically of, of reaching the World Cup in 2030. Mm-hmm. So basically they've, they've brought me in, um, the board has brought me in to be an ambassador for them and basically to help help um, both in Grenada and abroad to get the profile of Grenada football a bit mm-hmm. higher, to find out Grenada, there's loads of Grenada footballers that are out there um, and really preach them the message because the message I want to preach to them is that if you're playing League One football or Championship football and you're 25, 26, you probably ain't going to play for England. And I'm not trying to be that in a horrible way. I just mean it. Oh, that's real. Really, trying mm. to be realistic, right? Mm-hmm. So I understand when you're 21, 22, 23, you might want to think, I want to hold on to, f- to play for England. I get that. But I feel that once you reach a certain age, you can get to a World Cup. You can go and play in a Gold Cup. You can go and mm-hmm. play in a CONCACAF Cup mm-hmm. with Grenada and like experience international football. And I made that mistake. I made that mistake. And I'm telling people, don't make that mistake. So I know there's a lot of Grenadian young boys out there that have Grenadian heritage, um, parents, grandparents. And I'm just trying to reach out to them, basically, to find who they are, um, see if they're interested. And also go to Grenada and find the talent in Grenada and see what can be done with them. You know, Can we help some of them get seen? Um, can we help coach development and make mm-hmm. the coaching better? Because the coaching is better, then it'll be better for the kids growing up, sure. the, the grassroots kids. So there's a lot of stuff like that I'm just in, involved in right now. So I was just, I'm involved in football, bro. I'm involved in football. I don't know where, I'm starting my pro license in okay. next month. Okay. So I'm starting my pro license next month. That takes me two years to do. So mm. the way I look at it, I've got two years, two more years of fishing around, looking around, helping people. Um, that's what I'm really up to do right now, trying to help as many people as I can so that my time will come. Mm. I know that I will get my chance. I know there'll be a chance. Once I've got my pro license, um, I know I'll probably get I can go to America or go abroad but I know I'll probably get a chance in one of those countries to mm-hmm. be a manager to be a head coach and then start my own my own journey then it's exciting times bro man I'm sure without yeah. a doubt it's going to be positive and whoever whoever you're around I'm sure you're going to bring that positive energy as well so without a doubt alright cool 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 right quick fire round question yeah um, uh, first one up best player you've played with uh, Michael Owen Ah uh, yeah, I should have known. Um, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> next, next one. Um, best player you've played against? Um, Ronaldo. The original Ronaldo. The, ri- the original. Nah, nah. Yeah, you got what, what? was that like? Because for me, he's the best ever. What was? Yeah, what was yeah, playing yeah. against him? It's a different level, isn't it? That's what I mean. Just, <sighs> it's a different level. Pre-season friendly. He was just. It's different. He was just. Yeah, you're just, just different. You can't really explain what, mm. you're, what you're looking at. It's just different. Yeah. When did you play against him? What, what year was this? I can't remember the year. You know, it'll be on top of my head. It was, was it? Was it when you was in Spain? Inter Milan. No, no, he was at Inter Milan. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ronaldo yeah. Inter as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. C, yeah. C Dolph and all them guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. The Messi and all them man. Yeah, yeah that was. Yeah. That was a lot. Of, it was one of them ones where there was so much, so many good players on the pitch. I was looking at so many. I think I was looking at them more than playing. <laughs> 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 I can imagine, bro. These are some serious players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the proper team like this. Nah, yeah, bro. That you can't, you can't, boy. Ronaldo, mm. oh nine. Right, next exactly. one. Probably, uh, I probably know this one. Um, favorite manager you played for? Um, Gobi Graham Taylor. Gobi Graham Taylor. Yeah. Um, yeah. I see Kenny. Kenny. I would more say my best coach I've had. Mm. But manager, Graham Taylor. Mm. Yeah, he was on a different level, a whole a whole different level. I'll be honest with you, there's things I hear these joke guys talk about now and they talk about it like it's brand new news. And I'm thinking myself, but the guy that told me that in 1998, mm-hmm. he told me that in 1996. Like, mm-hmm. He was ahead of his time, ahead of his time. He taught me how to score goals. 
Okay. Are not by no training session. Mm. <laughs> no, 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 mm. no, 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 no. See, now everyone's got the stats and the analysts. He done it all himself. Mm. They would tell me, Giff, when the ball's in this, this place on the pitch, 99% it goes in this area in the goal mouth. Wow. And 80% the goal scored in here by a one touch finish. Mm -hmm. so what do I mean? So basically, Gaffer, when the ball's there, get myself there. Yes, son. Okay. <laughs> Can you tell me? But I mean, he told mm. me that on like five or six big points on mm -hmm. the pitch. Mm -hmm. When the ball's here, do this. Don't make, make your runs over the top when the ball's in this area. Make your runs in the channel when the ball's in this area. Because this will make him do that and this will mm -hmm. make him do that. Just just like a puzzle, but not mm -hmm. on a training pitch. Just me mm -hmm. and him talking. Powerful, man. He's a magician. Yeah, Powerful. he's a magician, man. Powerful. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace. Yeah, 100%, man. Um, next one. Three words to describe yourself. Lion heart, passionate, loving. Yeah, powerful one. Powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lion heart, passionate, and loving. Yeah, I think that. I Cold. think that'll be fair. Cold. Yeah. Last one. Um, best lesson you've learned in the last six months. <laughs> this is a good one, you know. You know I'm trying to take up the time. Say what now? In, uh, what was it? I think September. Mm -hmm. September, I got a job offer to go to do a project in Jamaica. Okay. Right? So I'm half Jamaican, half Canadian. So for me, it was like, boy, a project in Jamaica. I've always wanted to go back and help and give back. That's why I'm doing the stuff with Grenada, because I want to mm -hmm. give back. It's not about money, it's just about giving back, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I thought, this is good. It's a job, pays well as well. I'm going to go. Now, there were some things that weren't right. No, certain things are not right. The contract weren't right. Certain things that weren't right. But I was still going to go along with it, mm -hmm. right? And someone said to me, your vibes. I'm a person, I go by my vibes, you know what I mean? Someone said to me, your vibes are not right. They cut, like they cut. The vibes are cut with this. You can't do. And um, people question my vibes all over the years. And I say my vibes are this, my vibes are that. Give me two man these vibes, this to vibe that. And I tell them it's my vibe. It's not calling my vibes. Well, mm -hmm. My vibes are cut. If my vibes are cut with someone, they cut. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I didn't go. And then I was upset at the time because I really wanted to go. And then two weeks later, I get a phone call from Kenny. He wants me to come down to Portsmouth. A um, couple of weeks after that, um, I get accepted to the pro license. A couple of weeks after that, um, my son got the transfer to Spain. And if I went to Jamaica, I wouldn't, because I'm, I'm like, I'm not his agent, but I deal yeah, with yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, looking after him. And, yeah. Like, yeah, I look after him. I deal, I deal with him, with everything. So if I was in Jamaica, I wouldn't have been able to do the move for him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But because I, I was in England, I've done the move for him. There was like so many things. I said, wow, that is a lesson in that. That even though son looks beautiful on the outside, yeah, read the label, and when you open up the packaging, check to make sure inside is good as well. You understand? You see what I'm saying, bro? Because mm -hmm. Jamaica looks so good to me. Mm -hmm. It's my dream. It's like a dream job. It's a mm -hmm. job that I could just go and just say, "Boy, I'm going. I'm going to retire, and that's me for life now." Mm -hmm. I'm in. The, I'm in my island. I'm nice. I'm good money. Good money, especially for Jamaica. Mm -hmm. It was like good English money living mm -hmm. in Jamaica. Ooh, so I'm just saying, you're so, living like a right. king. Mm -hmm. That's my point. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like good English money, we can live good over here. Mm -hmm. And you're doing that in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So I was like, boy. But then when I realized, you know, they have the, the saying of what fur coat, no knickers. Yeah, yeah. When I really when I really searched it properly, I realized, nah, this is not really what I'm gonna do. But I thank God for patience. And if okay. I never had the patience and to and to trust in my vibe, to trust in my feeling. So really what I'm trying to get to is my biggest lesson I've learned in the last six months is go with my feeling. Mm -hmm. Go with my vibes. As long as I'm in tune with myself, as long as I'm meditating, as long as I'm in tune with my my spiritualness, my vibes, go with that always. Powerful. That's 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 the biggest lesson I've learned in the last six months. Yeah. I went around a big story, but no, 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 it's <laughs> good, man. Do you know what it is? That it's like like, like yeah. that's that's what it's about, man. It's like um mm. it's natural where you're just talking about things and it's sometimes when we have guests on to be fair i've never really had a, a guest where i'm like i'm having to force them to speak but mm. i've had conversations in normal life where you're like yeah 
you're not really getting much out of this person. Do you know what I mean? You're trying to, <laughs> what's going on? But they don't want to, but again, it comes down to vibes. Maybe they, they might not be vibing with me and, and things like that. But to end it off like that, bro, powerful, yeah. man. Um, cool, man. I'm like speechless a little bit, bro, because it's there's so much. <laughs> now, nah, honestly, bro, like I'm not even trying to gas it up or anything like that because there's so much substance to it. And again, I know we've only just touched the surface of your journey and things like that. So, um, I hope whoever's been listening, um, I know I've been inspired. If you've been inspired, make sure you leave your comments below. Um, check out Gift and Stuff as well. Um, we'll put the links in the description as well in terms of the academy and, and everything like that that Gift is doing. Um, but, bro, honestly, a pleasure speaking with you. Um, I've, we've been rambling on. I've, I've taken, I said to you 45 to an hour. We've done a full <laughs> 90 minutes match. Do you know what I mean? So... But no, nah, I appreciate it, bro, man. Appreciate um the, the time and honesty as well for opening up. And um, I wish you the best of luck, man, going forward. Yeah, no problem, bro. Listen, I think what you're doing is great as well. You know what I mean? Keep the message going out there because it's important. Having people like yourself who are real, that understand understand what's out there, what's out there in the streets, what's out there in people's homes. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you know you've lived it, you're in it. And it's, it's important because I think sometimes, Sometimes when you have too many famous people doing this stuff, it's not so real because mm. some people, their life is a bit different. So they're talking about all this one big stuff, all the glamour, but they haven't lived the, the, the other mm-hmm. side as well. And I mm-hmm. think people have to see both sides to know that, you know, you, you can live in the dirt, but you can, you can wash yourself out, off, wash yourself off and make yourself clean. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, Powerful, listen, man. I tell you what, I could talk for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. If ever there's a topic you want to talk about and like it's a gift, can you come on and just talk about this topic or this topic? We probably can do an hour just on one topic, bro. 100%. Yeah, like we're gonna, I'm going to keep love, you to your I word, bro. <laughs> I I'm love gonna keep to your word. For good, to, to good people. 100%. Good topic. It's, it's always a blessing. No, yeah? much love, man. Much love, yeah. King. Yeah, bro. Love, man. Cool. Yeah.